Body heads. Boom, boom. The whole go bang bang here. Let us begin. I want you to keep an eye out for the Boogity Man. Hey everybody, welcome to the VHS Bandits Podcast. Today, we're hopping into the old bobsleds and we're checking out Cool Runnings. Let's pop in the tape. You zigging? You zagging? Oh, cool. (laughs) Always remember... Your bones will not break in a bobsled. (laughs) No, no. They shatter. So, who wants in? We're looking for a sponsor for the first Jamaican bobsled team. (laughs) Their dream was to compete in the Olympics. (laughs) But they chose a sport (laughs) they knew nothing about. Great. Very good. In a climate they had never been. Cold weather endurance is vital to building a successful sled team. This is the true story of four unlikely athletes. How about I beat your butt right now? How about I draw a line down the middle of your head so it looks like a butt? Who weren't prepared for what they were about to face. It's a beautiful afternoon in Calgary. And there is a lot more coming up. Is this whole thing a big joke? I can't get my helmet on. Thanks, coach. Why don't you put some training wheels on that sled? Oh, 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 Leave the pop setting to the real man. You know, you're going to have to do this on your own one day. Oh. You have no business here, Jamaica. People are always afraid of what's different. Now, 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 now. Go! But they found in each other. Do you really expect these Jamaicans to qualify? The courage to give it their all. Not only are they going to qualify, they're going to turn some heads doing it. I see pride. I see power. And they took the whole world along for the ride. Used to follow your dreams. Follow your dreams. Walt Disney Pictures presents... I am feeling very Olympic today. A story for anyone who dares to stand out in a crowd. I didn't come up here to forget who I am and where I come from. And everyone with the courage... Cool Runnings! To stand up for their dreams. How will I know if I'm enough? When you cross that finish line. Where did these guys come from? You'll know. Cool Runnings. So what are we going to name this sled? Tallulah. (laughs) Tallulah. That's my mother's name. Tallulah. I like like it. And now our feature presentation. And welcome back to the VHS Bandits Podcast. This is your co-host, Dane Train. With me is one of the other co-hosts. Dover Hansen. And we got another co-host today on the show. A very special guest all the way from Texas. Some of you might know him as Sprinkles from the Behind the Counter Podcast. Sprinkles, hey man. Hey, what's happening? Sprinkles here. Hey, thank you for being on the show, dude. Oh, hey, thanks for having me. It's been like, what, 10 months in the making? That's right. Just about. That's right. It's been a while. <laughs> the long-awaited Cool Runnings episode that you've all been anticipating. <laughs> yeah, the fans have been wanting this forever. Yep. You, being such a big fan of the show, you wanted us to cover it so bad, you sent us a copy of the movie. That's right. I couldn't believe you didn't have one. I, I, I even sent you a slip, too. So I know. Enjoy it, that. It's, it's, I, it's, I, it's funny because uh, there are so many movies that i should own that i don't that's how like, we all feel like uh yeah, like like kazam everybody's got a copy of kazam i feel like i'm the only guy in the world without a copy of kazam i don't got a kazam you don't got a kazam hey no kazam. Sprinkles, you got a kazam i recently got a kazam you recently got a kazam oh it was man. recent within the last six months Ooh. oh man see see what i'm talking about all right team man you and me we're the only people without a kazam we got to get a Kazam. We club. got a Kazam guy here. You know what the longest, one of the hardest tapes to find ever was for me, uh, which actually my, my other co-host, Kevin, sent me a copy with Money Pit. Oh, I Money looked, Pit. I, I looked That's for Money Pit for years. 
I uh, feel like I always saw it down at the Savers on Lincoln Street in Worcester all the time. Yeah. Well, do you have a copy of Money Pit? I tell you, that's when you picked up. Uh, no. Not yeah, going to get into it now. <laughs> It's a good movie, but I didn't know that. Like, if I saw the Money Pit, I'd be like, eh, probably everybody has the money. You know, it doesn't come off as, like, a rarity to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, even, like, uh, uh, like the Power Rangers movie, I never seen it. I never found a copy, and I had to trade for it, uh, like, a year ago, because I was like, Jed, I I really wanted to see it. So I realized I didn't have that the other day. I was like, oh, my God. And I see that all I actively see it all the time. I don't buy it because I think I have it. Wow. <laughs> and even though I got my whole collections like cataloged in my phone, I can check, but I just, I'm like, oh, I got it. Oh my God. That you have a whole time. inventory well, you have a on your phone? That's a good idea. I should Absolutely. do that. I have a Google Sheet so I can open it anyway. <gasps> Damn, wow. that's a good idea. I, I catalog, catalog everything at name, genre, year. I got, if they're clamshells, I highlight them. Uh, Damn. Oh, you got a whole man. system. Man, well, I did it. I did it when I had about a thousand. I knew oh, I wouldn't. Wow. Yeah, that I wouldn't want to do it. Whoa. And now I'm, I'm encroaching three. So I, three thousand. Yeah. So Holy I'm glad. Shit. And you uh, didn't. You <laughs> didn't have Kazam until two. Exactly. Two days so, ago. You must That's live in. Like, you must live in one of those places where it's like you open a. You open up a closet and they just come tumbling out at you. Uh, and like and like you. You want to go take a shower. Open up the shower. They're tumbling out you. You open you know, up a you, box of cereal. You open the cereal. They're coming out of the cereal box. Oh wow! I thought you actually had a, a prop there. I thought that was a box of cereal. That was good. Uh, no, no, <laughs> but <laughs> oh. Oh, cool running O's. All right. <laughs> uh, but you'd be surprised. No, there's actually all my stuff's fully on shelves. Oh, wow. Cool. Crazy. I know. That's I awesome. know, dude. It's been insane, but there's no more room. <laughs> there's no more room. It's it's pretty much maxed out. Now, right now, I also know you are – you're into some other stuff too. You're a big Alien fan. Yes. And yes, you're a big fan. Sega fan, and you are a yes. Sega Saturn guy. I am, yeah. and it totally oh, dwindled, Good. so like I don't buy for it anymore because it's insane. Yeah, and I like to buy tapes because they're cheap. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I love Sega Saturn. I was an original owner. Um, I still have T Man. Likewise, uh, mm-hmm. from back when we were kids, and that's that's it's... probably our our best video game memories as kids is from the Saturn. Fucking I loved uh, Saturn. Virtual Cop. Yep. Yeah, like, like the, uh, oh, dude, oh, Virtual man. Cop. <laughs> <laughs> loved it. <laughs> Just uh. loved no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Machine oh, gun. And Mr. Bones, uh, Bug. Oh, yeah. Oh, Bug's great. Bug 2. Oh, bug 2. Bug goes to Hollywood. Yep. Uh, Gex. 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 Gex uh, didn't know where to live. They tried. 3DO tried him. Oh, he was everywhere. Sega got him. Then yeah. PlayStation got him. And then no one wanted him. Once he had the 316 vest on Nintendo, mm-hmm. he really traversed everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he was supposed to be the 3DO then, mascot. Yeah, and then he then he went everywhere yeah, else. Just kinda... And then he went to Geico. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. him, Crazy. by the way. That's him. It's... <laughs> hey, oh, it's a man. good gig. He sold out, but hey, whatever. He's yeah. he's making that paper. Okay. Why don't you so... tell us a little bit more about your podcast and your Instagram account and everything else you got going on? Oh, yeah. Jump into uh... the movie. Yeah, well, uh, Collection Therapy is who I am on Instagram. Um, mostly tapes. Now it's starting to be more like art stuff, doodles I draw, and stuff like that. I run a website, collectiontherapy.com, where you can get VHS tapes. I have hundreds for sale. They are strict $2 a piece. I don't want people to pay a lot for tapes, um, but I do That's need to make some money because ship them to you. Yeah. But uh, but I figure $2 across the board. I don't care what I post. Like I, I hate eBaying tapes now. So I kind of stopped doing that. I realized I was getting a little out of control. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, yeah, collectiontherapy.com. I'll have shirts and stuff soon. And then I'm also on a podcast, Behind the Counter, who I, I wasn't always the host of, but now I'm the co-host with Pizza Planet Video. So, And over there, we just talk about the same thing you guys do. We just pick a movie and fucking chat about it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah! yeah. <laughs> so it. I know. Uh, uh, so right now in April, uh, you guys are running through the whole Alien series right now. Yes. Yeah. yeah and that was totally. You would have thought we planned that out, but at, it came like three days before the podcast. We were like, "What should we do for April?" And realized it's the 40th anniversary of Alien. Yep. Uh, there's four weeks in the month, and the fourth Friday happens to be 
April 26th. So we figured, you know, every Friday we'll post for the original four movies. All right. We'll probably, we'll probably chit-chat about the in-betweens and the Prometheus and whatnot. But yeah, sure. uh, yeah just the main four. Cause awesome. Yeah, it's good I'm stuff. a big fan. Always been a fan. Uh, Alien Resurrection is actually the first R-rated movie I was allowed to watch by myself at home. Ooh, Teen Man and I. Yeah, yeah. We Alien saw it is. together so in the theater in 1997. Yeah. Really? That's I, awesome. I think that was I, I the... Got a, uh, I got a copy of it at Building 19. Oh, well, ah! you know, <laughs> holy <was> shit! <laughs> yeah! Building 19, and I, I asked my mom, I was like, can I buy this? It's rated R. And she was like, yeah, it doesn't look like there's any boobs or anything. So, <laughs> so wrong. Uh, ah. I must have... It must have been ten or so. There were uh, there were yeah. there were boobies in that movie though. Blown boobies. Yeah, yeah. There were like boobies. You know what I mean? There, yeah. yeah, like test tube Sigourney Weaver boobies. Yeah. Yeah, that's not where my mind went when I uh, <laughs> but, I was already right seeing that. Oh man, we could talk about building nineteen all day. I know. We are huge I've got my, fans. I've got my Earthworm gym tapes at building nineteen. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Oh my God! That was. Are, uh, there, still, are there still any? No, they're no, all, all they gone. gone. All gone. Yeah, I, mine turned into a the like a Babbage's and a Coles down in Hingham. Oh, that used yeah. to be mine. Um, uh, Whole Foods. Uh, the uh, <laughs> uh, the the one that we used to go to. I think it's like a rent a center or something like that now. Yeah. Down on Grafton Street. Shame. Yeah, but uh, all the places. Oh man, yeah, we were we were huge fans of Billy Nineteen back in the day. Um, actually, and for the... uh, for, huh? for for Christmas, ah. my brother got me um a book. It was like the history of Building Nineteen, and it was all illustrated by the guy who used to do the flyers. Yeah, it's wicked fucking cool. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, Did you uh, ever have you, any you, Jerry-O's? You send me, let me know his, the name. Whoever, oh, yeah. find I'll, that out. I'll shoot you Whoever a link. Whoever drew those flyers, because I love that that dude. I want to get that dude tattooed on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. no, you're going to get Jerry, <laughs> Jerry Ellis. Ellis. Yeah. <laughs> no, the little, the little Building 19 dude. Yeah, that's uh, Jerry Ellis. Yeah, yeah, he's the that's founder of Building 19, yeah, Jerry Ellis. Yeah, the owner. Yep. Oh, I didn't, know, I didn't know he was named after uh, yeah. the founder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. That's even better. <laughs> Uh, I still have my uh, I still have my Billy Nineteen hat. Do you still have yours, dude? It's got to be somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they gave us free Billy Nineteen hats one day. It was Nineteen Day. So we got face paint. Were they like trucker caps? Uh, they're they like, like visors. visors. Like, yeah. <laughs> Neat. Oh man, yeah, I can super I can still smell that place today. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. smell like rugs. Rugs <laughs> and uh, and burnt coffee. Yeah, and old cereal. I actually really like their coffee. <laughs> We're, okay, let's just fill in for that. We're, we'll talk about Cool Runnings in a minute. Yeah, but, but uh, it's Building 19. Yeah, <laughs> Building 19 is, for those of you that don't know, it's a store in the Massachusetts, New England area that sold just a bunch of broken shit and expired <laughs> food. <laughs> and when you walked in, and you could get free coffee with the, uh, the like, powdered creamer. <laughs> there, yeah. uh, the slogan was... Like, Good it was like cheap. if Walmart had a. It was like if Walmart had a thrift store. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was Walmart like new stock, but old. In the attic. Yeah, or yeah. like irregular. So it's like a shirt with, uh, with something One fucked sleeve. up on it. You know? Yeah. Yeah, and they sell all of the uh, the XFL merchandise and shit. That <laughs> all the losing Super Bowl teams, all that stuff. Is uh, XFL merch, though. So. <laughs> They're coming back, baby. That might be valuable. Yeah. Yeah. Day. yeah. So, how about cool running? Hey. Right. So let's talk about cool running. So, so I, 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 this begs the question, this Brinkles, what yeah. it, you, you wanted us to, to talk about this movie. What, tell us what, what does this movie mean to you? What is, what is the story with this movie? Uh, I mean, aside from meaning everything to me, well, we gotta is, know the fans need to know. The, this is the ultimate feel good movie. This, this brings joy to any situation that I've ever been in, in my life. There have been weeks where I've watched this every day of the week. Um, definitely. I have also hit just replay before. Okay, uh, all right. It's motivating start to finish. Uh, the jokes are just cheesy enough to make you laugh, but not too cheesy to make you want to turn it off. And uh, it's got Sean Candy. And, and was I this mean, his last movie? Danger, and you said this was his I last movie. I think this made. is his last movie. I'm was pretty sure this last? was his last movie. I think it's his fattest movie. It's his fattest movie and last movie. 
What year was this exactly? I thought it would be on the back of the box. 92 or 3? Uh, I'm looking for he it. Was in, he was at Home Alone, and that was 90. What? Was that 1990? Or was I it 91? This, I thought this came after Home Alone. It probably did. Uh, it doesn't Mine say. No date. There's no date on this. It's mystery date. We don't know. know. The Illuminati is covering up John Candy's death with the box of Cool Runnings. You heard it first. We broke the story on the VHS Bandits. Go to change.org and sign the petition to put the date on the back of Cool Runnings. I will say, isn't that the most annoying? Like, Uh, really, they put put so much text on these things and on the, the tape itself. And you can't write four numbers? I know. The, the internet says 1993. Okay. Yeah, this very well could be his last movie. I mean, at least starring movie. He might he might make an appearance in something. Yeah, true. But it's perfect. I mean, he. it's not like he looks bad in it or anything. No, well, no, no, definitely no. his fattest. But yeah. It, yeah. He, it is his he doesn't look like he's dying or anything. No, no. So you no got one would be any wiser. Yeah. Yeah. You got a clam uh, over there. You got a clam shell. I got the regular box. Yes. <clears throat> it used to have a sticker on it, and there's the old gooey glue where the sticker used to be. Probably said yep. like five day rental or something like that. Yeah, new release. <laughs> is there uh, any uh, difference on the picture of the box, or is it the same? No, no, I think mine's deal. the. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. really the only the only promotional photo they took for this movie because I even when you type it into Google, there's there's almost nothing for. Yeah. Almost no promo photos for this oh, movie. Weird. Breaks my heart. I mean, like this, this movie a... did not get the love it deserves. It's half a true story. Well, yeah. It's half well, I mean, a true story. What's the other half? The other half is like the comedy. Oh yeah. Oh, it's, it's, oh. It's, it's dramatized, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's very, it's very dramatized. Life. They're uh, very serious, and I don't think they had such a bad crash at the end either. The real. Oh, ones. I don't know. Um, I really don't. I should like. I, I don't know the real story because it's not as good as the movie. <laughs> Probably not. You it's never not. looked it up. <laughs> hey, they made the movie. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, all you need to know is the movie. Like it was on the Olympics. We could watch the real thing happen. I I suppose. Yeah, that's but, true. Right? I mean, I don't know. But uh, we're not gonna. So it says uh, this is a hilarious comedy. Everyone's cheering. Correct. Inspired by Jamaica's first <laughs> Olympic bobsled team. Uh, it, it uh, American Movie Classic says it's a howling funny ten. A howling funny ten. And That's ABC right. TV says it's Rocky on Ice. Okay, that Disney one. Only <laughs> ABC. Come I don't on, know about that one. ABC. What is also, this? also, it's just not. No. <laughs> yeah, like, it's not it's that not funny. All. They could have equated it to a lot of other things, but not Rocky. No. Who's Rocky? Darius, he's not Rocky in this. <laughs> well, uh, you know their names. I did not catch a single person's name in this entire movie. You did I, not know Darius Benick. I had no. a really hard Brent time <laughs> with their names too. Yeah, man. Well, Sanka Coffee. Well, I haven't watched it every day for a week straight, so that's maybe true. that's oh, yeah. where I'm messing up. Yeah, people don't like to watch this with me. <laughs> just, I I kind of just you alienate friends very quickly. I just kind of. I mean, it's like karaoke for me. I just. <laughs> know the words I see. just recite the entire you just have it on help it so i have this thing where i have to repeat sounds or noises or phrases i just say them i have no control especially when it's something like that oh, we've God. got a bobsled team oh. i could just imagine you at the donut making factory like mm-hmm. singing the bobsled song call. oh my god yeah that would be great i don't put it on at work I would. If well, we had a TV, I would absolutely put well, this on. So is this like, the movie that you've watched the most? Um, I would say like this, Home Alone, um, and maybe like Office Space. Ah, okay. Have right. been my th- most because I have watched them more than once in a sitting, yeah. on more than one occasion. Sure, <laughs> so, sure. Yeah. As a kid, Home Alone was my like a two-year-old crying. Mm-hmm until it rewinds to watch it again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was my big movie. Gotcha. So, uh, but Cool Running, actually, I Cool Runnings was more of a memory until my late teens when I found it again. Oh. I, had, I had watched it once or twice as a kid. Yeah. And then when I was like 17, I saw a DVD of it at FYE because, <laughs> hell yeah. It's you still spent open. $35 it's still open. Dollars to buy it. <laughs> And I bought the DVD, and I watched that thing a lot, a lot. And I'm 
everyone watch it with me. And no one hates Cool Runnings. Well, that's true. You, I don't think you can hate this movie. I mean, right. it is pretty much uh, the, like, stereotypical underdog sports movie. It's got the slow clap and everything. It yeah. has... But it's not... I don't know which movie first had the slow clap or anything, but it does it well, and it's it's got everything that uh, an underdog sports movie needs to have, but it doesn't feel like they were taking it from another... You know what I mean? It feels original enough. You know what I mean? I think because they didn't, they didn't win... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's like true. it wasn't a miracle. Tail. They just didn't die. Yeah, yeah. everybody <laughs> just you they watch the survive. movie and you think, all right, they're gonna get gold medals at the end. It's like it's like yeah. the Little Big League or any other '90s mm-hmm. sports underdog movie. You're like, yeah, of course they're gonna win, but they don't. It's it's a big twist of right. the movie, you know? Right, but I they feel, still yeah. do. They still get the respect from everybody, which was the real goal. And yeah. I mean the sub, the 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 hints of racism there, the it was super woke as far as I mean they're in Calgary. They they're totally out of their element. Yeah. Notoriously uh, racist Calgary. Yes. Get your shit together, they're Calgary. They're terrible up there. In those in those Russian communists in there. Exactly. Yeah, that was weird. Especially hey, do you know Swiss when the Soviet it... Union dissolved? Because um, there was a Soviet in the audience, and I thought by 1987 it had. No. no. Okay. I I'm believe not it was like, wasn't it 1990? Well, you know, I was thinking about. I was just thinking about that because, like, remember when Goldeneye came out, and the whole thing was about like, oh, Russia's changed, and that was like 92, 93 ish too, right? So it was probably yeah. right around that same time, I guess. I think it was when Gorbachev took the wall down, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and then again, I thought that was a late. 80s? That was 89, 90, because oh. Bush was still huh. president, or yeah. 90. Yeah, it was 90. Shows you I've been sleeping in history class. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. yeah. Um, I just think it's a fan. I mean, it's an Olympic movie. It's it. It's just so good. I love the Jamaican vibe. The whole... Jamaican vibe. The, whole, the fact that the whole beginning takes place on the island, and the the initial scene where they trip... It is just heart wrenching. Yeah, and you know it's coming. You know that like, it's not a racing movie. Oh, oh, when the dude oh. is racing. Okay, I see. What yeah, you're when yeah, they yeah. when they in they trip and they ruins it for all of them. You hate Junior. I hate. I hate that little square headed. Oh, it's gonna say, he's got a weird hairdo. It's so hair flat head. There's no way someone saw that and was like, "Yo." It's like a yep. Frankenstein thing. It's I don't know. He, and he wears those tight shirts. He doesn't look very good in the movie. Yeah. But, uh, but anyway, yeah. The one scene I will say, uh, until recently, I didn't realize how weird and out of place it was, is the... Uh... That, that, my wife is, just got home from work. And she's saying <laughs> hey, hello. Hey, I hope this, you had a good day at work. This, this, is, hey. this is Sprinkles. He's, hey, he's what joining up? us today. We watch Cool Runnings. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh. Uh, Hell yeah, we got to watch yeah. the Barbie tape. Sprinkles, have Which you ever one? seen <laughs> the the Barbie birthday in Epcot Disney World tape? No. It's I'm up not. on YouTube, man. You got to watch it. It's the greatest fucking thing you're ever going to watch in your life. And my wife all was right. like, if you find a tape, I want to be on that episode. I'm like, all right. Oh, all really? right, cool. Yeah. Find that fucking tape. Yeah, man, we got to find I'll the tape. I'll keep an eye out for you yeah. then. If, if anybody it. out there knows or has the Disney Epcot Barbie birthday tape. I will trade you for it. Let me know. There you go. It's official. It's a fish. Uh, Anywho. Was, oh, so anyway, the only scene that I think I, that I just realized is so out of place is why is there a country western bar in Calgary? I know. That Holy is weird. Shit. Yeah. What the fuck is up That's with when that? I was like, wait a minute. Aren't, and it was actually my girlfriend that pointed out. She was like, wait, aren't they in Canada? And I was like, excuse me? I was like, yeah, that... You're right. That doesn't add up. Is that, that is a thing weird. in Canada? To any Canadian listeners, aside from the fact that we just totally, totally called you racists, um, is that a thing there? Well, hey, is, you uh, know, country they, western bars. It's <laughs> cultural appropriation of the southern of western the southern. hemisphere of, of the United States and Canada. We want it back. <laughs> well, hey, maybe, maybe it's like their Bugaboo Creek. Bugaboo right. Creek. <laughs> 
Well, hey, yeah. you know what? Well, funny enough, we have a Canadian-themed restaurant that went out of business. So maybe there they have a, a Texas-themed restaurant or whatever. You know, it's like, their Texas room. I love that scene, but it just doesn't make any sense. I used to like, why that's the bar. I used to work with a girl who had family in Australia, and they came to America, and she took them to a, to an Outback Steakhouse. And they're like, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> they didn't even know what it was. They never heard of it, and they were like, "What the right, fuck is yeah. this?" Yeah, they don't do that. So. There. Well, yeah. Why would you have an Outback Steakhouse in the actual Outback? You just have a steakhouse, right? But I, yeah, I guess. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so what? Well, hey, well, hey. It, I, oh, if I go, if I drive an hour and a half up to Maine and I'm up on York Beach, they're still gonna say Maine lobsters on the menu, aren't they? Yeah, cause it's in Maine. I know. Or are they gonna say local lobsters? I don't know. Oh, I see. We just say lobsters. Uh, yeah, yeah. we just say lobsters. I don't know. That's true. I mean, do you think Maine imports lobsters from anywhere? Uh, that would be weird. No. That would be some shady stuff. If they weird. export and then import like. Connecticut lobsters. Connecticut oh, lobsters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Boston Harbor the, lobsters. The, the, the freshwater lobsters, you know. <laughs> the <Rupert laughs> lobsters. Yeah, yeah, fucking Charles, Charles River of lobsters. Let's <laughs> <laughs> stick in syringes, poking out. <laughs> oh, man. Man. Uh, <laughs> um, see, I'm, yeah. I'm okay. I'm glad y'all are from where you're from. I tell you what. We're trying to get the accent out of you. We're trying to extract it. I know. It's not hard. It, it comes right up. <laughs> fucking dude. Fucking dude. <laughs> cool running. Fucking So, anyway. Uh, to... Oh, by yeah, the way, no, this movie no. is inspiring, heartwarming, and very, very funny. I think we can all agree with that, says CBS Radio yeah. Los Angeles. It is heartwarming, and like honestly, this, there's so many struggles between the five main characters. Maybe not Senka. There's really no struggles for Senka. He except doesn't do his shit. Main... He's just there. Which one is yeah. he? The goofy he's just... guy. He's got the yeah. egg that doesn't break. Egg. Egg. Just I, I like him. Yeah. yeah. He's like, I I'm, like the, I'm the driver. Yeah. I'm the driver. You know what's weird? Yeah. I feel like he was kind of big in the late '90s, then he just disappeared. Yeah, Doug like, E. Doug. Yeah, like name. like uh, he was on. Uh, I remember Bill Cosby came out with a new show on CBS at the time or ABC, and he was like a low lead star on that. And he was. I remember seeing him like on a bunch of interview shows, and they just wow. fucking disappeared. Is he actually where are, Jamaican? Where are they now, Doug E. No. Doug? If you're listening, yeah, Doug E. Doug, when are you gonna come <laughs> be on our podcast? Yeah, Doug E. Doug. This is an official reach out. If anyone wants to retweet this, thank you. <laughs> I just remember him. I just remember him being on some talk show where like they cooked, and, it, and the guy was like, "So what do you cook at home?" He's like, "I, I don't really cook. I make franks and beans." So that's a, that's like all I really remember about that guy. That's all you going, got from him. going wow. franks and beans. So I never saw any of these guys in anything again. Uh, uh, this might have been all their own, their one except, one and done. Uh, Darice, the the lead guy, the driver. Yeah, he. Uh, Shit, I, I believe I saw him in a trailer recently. I was watching a movie, and the trailer before the movie played had him as the star. And I was, like, oh, a Motown movie. I think it's just oh, called Motown. Oh shit! Or the okay. Pretenders, one of those. Yeah, he plays okay. the, or maybe Little Richard. I don't know. He plays now, somebody. That's and it's a, awesome. all right. It's a lot of different Little things. Richard. But okay. Interesting. I think it's I actually thought... Little Richard. Yeah, I think he plays Little Richard in a TV movie. Oh, okay. I thought the mean guy with the goat. <laughs> the, the like. You will, Brenda. Sure. I thought I thought he was Darius from Hootie and the Blowfish. I thought that was Darius Rucker. No, that's yeah. Darius Rucker is much smaller than that. He's got to be. Well, real I quick, I like him. There was a guy who there's a guy who was in this movie who I thought was uh, I thought he was Peter Young Vincent Candy. from Fright Night, and then it ended up not being him. He's like the gray-haired guy who's all like, "Oh, we we changed the time from like one oh. point." Two minutes to one yeah. minute flat. And I swear the to God, friend, I was like, "Oh shit, that's him!" Calvary scum. And I, I like that too when he confronts the the board because no one ever does that. And yeah. The fact that he just tells him off and is like, "That's how you want to be." Yeah, he's. Like, and then like they do show at least some compassion. For a race. That's what. It's, yeah. Like in Pretty Woman or something, he's like, "Hey, I need a real job. I'm not letting any." John Candy waltzes in in his high heels and his shoulder pads, and he demands a raise. <laughs> oh, oh, one other thing that I just, I have to, this is another thing I noticed recently, is, is when they first meet John Candy's character in the bar, and 
at no point does it say that he owns this bar. I Do you, did you get it. that? Just drinking. That they never bar. mentioned that he owns it. He seems like a deadbeat that's just sitting at the bar. But then he has a bobsled poster at yeah. the bar. And then he just leaves. So does he leave the bar? Does he make money from the bar? He well, seemed I to mean, be worried about money. Uh, why there, does he there still... wasn't too many customers there. He was drinking his own booze. He was, you know, you don't... I guess that's why I assume supply, he's, they he's say. the only customer. I, I, well, I don't you know, know. Maybe look... he... I don't know if you noticed, but if you look briefly in the background, it looks like there's a stripper dance uh, walkway. Really? So oh, really? Didn't... like really quick, if you watch like catwalk. Yeah, catwalk. So maybe it's like one of those nighttime strip. Tra- you know, hey, it's kind of like lamplighter or uh, or centifolds, you know, and okay. uh, lamplighter too, and uh, or uh, Betty or, Betty's. or or the Max and Bill Ricca, you know. And, okay. Uh, <laughs> a lot of strip clubs. <laughs> and a lot of strip clubs. And, uh, uh, you know, Alex's uh, now, South Wayman. Oh, I don't know that one. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <that's... laughs> oh, but you know it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, but anyway, yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, like maybe it's maybe it's just during the day and uh, nobody goes to during the day. Maybe it's one of those nighttime uh, Jamaican, Jamaican uh, nudie bars, you know? Yeah, you don't want to see the day stripper. They're never good. like, there's yeah. no way he owns a strip club. Who's working he, for him? It kind of looks it's like clearly, he could own a strip there's club. No respect, there's no respect for him, though. No one likes him. Well, that's true. I mean, he but seems what... To, he seems to just be like a outcast, but maybe he just has a shitty I think he's just bar. a drunk. The poster always confused me. I was like, wait, as soon as they say, why you got that poster on the wall? I was like, wait, why does he have that poster on the wall? Like, also, why would he hang it up? Well, because I think he is longing for better times. You know, he he's he's like Al Bundy with his like <laughs> high school football trophy. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, right. It's the same thing. He, okay, yeah, he is very Al Bundy. If this yeah. was uh, if this was made by MGM, he would have been more Al Bundy. <laughs> I think. But so. it is a Disney movie. If someone else got the rights <laughs> to that, if it was like a like a darker movie. <laughs> I'd watch that if if Ed O'Neill was the coach. I'm not. No, I think John God. Candy did a great job. That's, but that's, if Ed O'Neill was the league. coach, it's a little big huh? league. Yeah, isn't, he, would... the, he, isn't he the mean coach? Yeah, He's like the bad guy coach. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, you want him to be the good guy coach? The good guy coach. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, he's a little bit of both in this. Yeah, yeah that's I true. think. Al He's Bundy, tough. I mean, Ed O'Neill would make a instead of you know what they did with the bad news bears. If Al, if it was Ed O'Neill in the remake of the Bad News Beers, I think I think we'd have a, another classic on our hands. Anyway, That's there's probably, not yeah. enough underdog kids sports movies anymore. The '90s were full of them. I get this one doesn't I really know. count, but it's an underdog sports movie, and they were everywhere. I think because kids don't, I mean, people don't win sports anymore. That's true. Like they the don't want kids to see that. Like sales would go. De- people, kids would, your parents would complain. Kids would probably enjoy it because it's a better movie. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. I didn't. I don't even like sports. Never did. But the fact, like, I always love sports movies, and I still do. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah I, that's I, true. I agree. Yeah. But they totally stopped making them. Like, where's Kevin Costner's baseball movies? Why did they stop? Yeah, Kevin Costner. He, he made like forty baseball movies. Air buds. Where'd they go? Uh, they're where, still around. Where are my air buds? So Airbud's still around, but now they're puppies and they're called Air Buddies, and they don't play sports. Now they're doing things like going to space, and you can find all that on Netflix. So that's the only reason I know. I'd rather not. Just scrolling, <laughs> endless scrolling. You come across the kids section, you find Air Buddies in space. Wow, that's really. And you try to arrow. watch it. You try to watch it. You give it. You give it about four minutes, and you're like, wow, like they don't think kids can speak. Yeah. Kids' They're, movies are a lot dumber now, I think. They really like, are. Yeah. They're, like, for animals. It is Pretty much, too. yeah. It's like that Baby Einstein, <laughs> or like, TV for dogs tape or something, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, this movie taught me when I was a kid probably more than I consciously remember. Yeah, the and TV. they say asshole in it and everything. Yeah. But if I lined on your head and make it look like a butt. I remember that <laughs> so vividly from being a kid. And the reason I ever watched it was my cousin, his, my aunt, she would go to Jamaica all the time. Oh, so no I guess there was just some connection. To it. I found out what, what the smell of weed was when I got older. And I was like, oh, that's what her house smelled like. I didn't know. <laughs> I, I thought was it was kid. just patchouli. I like, yeah, I thought it was just Wait, what? Potpourri. 
Yeah. Do it. Does was, anybody make huge. potpourri anymore? My house, like my mom always had potpourri. I think you just like fill it. I think you just, they just repackage it from the trash. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> it's just I haven't all seen the same. It's those little like beet chips and those little. Yeah, it's like stinky mulch. It's like <laughs> for your house. <laughs> <laughs> stinky yeah. mulch. No, no, but, mulch. I love the smell of mulch. How come you can't just put mulch in a glass bowl and put that oh, in, shit. put that you on, on the top of your something. toilet? You know. Yeah, you're onto something. Pal. Oh, yeah. I, I really like that. That's the way to go. Yeah. You know. Indoor mulch. Yeah, you know what? Right. I always wondered. I always wondered why a spice that we don't eat. We don't eat pine. We, we do everything else with it, but we never like have like a pine steak. Mm, not true. Pine, pine nuts. Steak. You can have pine nuts. Pine. Those I don't think those are actually related to pine trees, are they? Are you, are you sure? <laughs> are those nuts from a pine tree? Pineapple. <laughs> from like There's a pine pineapple. cone. Pineapple. You got a pineapple. I thought a pine cone came from pine well, trees. Where do pine nuts come from? I think that's I've just never the even name. heard of a pine <laughs> Maybe nut. Maybe they are. Pine nut. They're like they're like this big. They I just know that they're in pesto and they're delicious. Yeah, they're in pesto. Yeah. It's real good, but they're expensive. They're so wicked I assume expensive. They, yeah. Well, pine trees are everywhere. They shouldn't be expensive if that's the case. I am well, squashing <laughs> this theory right now. Well, pine trees are everywhere there. I haven't seen a pine tree in a while. Oh, oh that's true. That's I true. know. I miss those sons of bitches. I'm. I all I see is distance. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> just no woods out here. Flat land of muskrats, huh? Flat. Down Not, there. How many muskrats? But a lot so of traffic. I guess we track. should probably go through the the like the plot outline oh, of, yeah. of the film. Oh, you want to read the back of the box? <clears throat> oh, did you? Have, you didn't? Have no, I've, I, I've been reading all the quotes. I haven't gotten to the oh, back okay, of the cool. box. Sprinkles, why don't, you're the guest. You, why don't you yeah. read the back? Yeah, you read it, box. dude. <sighs> well, you'll love Cool Runnings. The outrageously funny comedy hit inspired by the true story of Jamaica's first Olympic bobsled team. There were four unlikely athletes with one impossible dream. Now, with the help of an ex-champion as their coach, John Candy of Uncle Buck, four Jamaicans leave their sunny tropical island home, <laughs> sunny tropical island home, <laughs> to enter the chilly Winter Olympics to compete for the gold in a sport they know nothing about: bobsled racing. Finding the courage in in each other to give it their all, they meet the challenge and soon become heroes. Well, uh, taking the whole world along for the ride. You'll be cheering along and loud for this unlikely team in this feel-good comedy hit. So they don't really tell you the plot, but they tell you what happens. Yeah, yeah a little bit. So, I mean, no. that's pretty much what happens. They have ups, yeah. they have downs, they brace a bobsled, and it's hot in Jamaica and cold in Canada. Right. That's pretty so, much what you need to know. They don't mention that Doris is a is a sprinter that that almost makes it to the Summer Olympics. That's true. And the reason that he's doing this is because his father uh, was an Olympic sprinter who was trying to be recruited by John Candy's character to be a bobsledder because John Candy thought as a bobsled coach, that getting a sprinter would be great on the ice. Mm. And then, of course, the next generation shows up, which I believe was the true aspect of it. I don't know. I don't know if that's really true or not, but I thought that was a true part of it. Maybe, Wait, maybe the whole John Candy. I thought the whole, like, his dad was... Was a was sprinter and all this? Sprinter, yeah, maybe. But then again, completely guessed there. I was yeah. just hoping. I don't know how many people are going to check this after, so... And They'll the, know more than me. The other guy was a box car derby. He's racer. a box car racer. I think that's which his full time like job. It's like a push car. Push cart. Yeah, yeah, push car. Yeah, uh, he's a push cart driver. Um, and he sells, I think he makes and sells shirts, judging by his. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was so like airbrushing cut. shirts at the Grafton Flea yeah. Market with like awesome. Looney Tunes and like <laughs> Taz saying like bad grandma or whatever. Yeah, like. yeah. <laughs> bad grandma. And also, did you notice that <laughs> all their houses. Are all about. They're all about grandmas <laughs> with Tasmanian devils on them. Or they have like right. skinny body. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the bikini. Yeah. Yeah. Do you uh, notice that all their all their houses are miles from anything? Yeah, it's weird. 
They yeah. showed Darius's house at the beginning, and he has like an island villa. Yeah, yeah that's rich. beautiful. Uh, which I don't know why he would want to leave that shit. I would, I would just be like, I'm chilling. Yeah, like, I'm go to Canada. Anyway, yeah, he gets, he gets, they get tripped up uh, during the qualifier for the Olympics. So literally, like four people who are not qualified to win wind up winning, and it's not their story. And imagine how those actual people in the real world, how those people yeah. felt during this movie. They're like, you know, I actually won the Olympics that year. But, uh, yeah, but where's their that story? Was that was me. Yep. You know? There I go. And I'm out of the movie. That's uh, crazy. They should have. Yeah. Then, uh, then, of course, by some turn of fate, Doris finds out that his dad had all that thing with John Candy. Goes and finds John Candy. Uh, befriends him by force. Yeah. Really just passes him. Uh, hide out in, in his back. toilet. They nearly give him a heart attack, and I did, that didn't look fake. That's probably what like, killed him well, in real that's, life. That's what happened, yeah. I think they just filmed him around set. That was <laughs> the last scene they shot. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Ouch. Well, anyway. It's like the crow. They had to use a stunt double for all the rest oh, of the movie. No. Oh. oh, no. John Candy did not die during the filming of this. John but, yeah. Were... Uh, yeah, you befriends them. They... Uh, they learn how to bobsled on a hill with a with a push cart thing with a bucket on wheels, and uh, then they go straight to Canada. And that doesn't make sense. The fact that well, they can they just quickly also... get into the Olympics. Yeah, they're like the In two years. They... I, no, dude, it was three months. Three like months. That. <laughs> That's the other thing that I didn't realize how much time had gone by, and I was like, wait, I thought the Olympics had just. I guess it had been a while since they'd seen each other. Been like a year and a half since they had all seen each other. I thought what? No, I thought they were. They were, that they were, they were the qualifying. Bar. They were qualifying for the Summer Olympics, which are two years from the Winter Olympics. Oh, but when, so they, when they actually the qualifier, start the bobsled thing, though, right? That's, that's like when a year they and have half three later. months to train. Yeah. Yeah. So, they make it seem like everything happened within a week's time. They go a good amount of time with us. That's yeah. what always. Yeah, I was like, wait, the Summer Olympics are not the same year as the Winter Olympics. But they kind of just... that one up. They, unless they were back then, but I don't believe they were. I, I, uh, maybe the committee changed again, the rules to again, fuck with Jamaica just, like they always do. That's right. Exactly. Which at the end of the movie, it does say, at the end of the movie, it does say that they came back the next year as heroes. But when I was looking, at, they didn't go back. Oh, Oh, they right. never, well, they never, Jamaica they never back? actually. Jamaica never returned to bobsledding until this last Winter Olympics, actually, oh. like twenty seven to eighteen or sixteen. Really? Uh, it was a two person female, but they were both Jamaican. It was a Jamaican bobsled team. Oh. And it was like I don't know if they just did it for nostalgia's sake, if they were like, "Yo, let's do this." <laughs> if they, remember when we went to imagine, the imagine if they were just like you know sixteen year olds that were like, "Yo, Cool Rings is a shit. You want to just do that?" Like, <laughs> yeah. I have gone back to the olympics they they've just not gone back uh hey, they didn't they didn't I win but... anything from this movie it's that all you need to do to be an olympic athlete is train for three months in a sport you know nothing about and get someone to give you twenty thousand dollars yeah that That's was a big help. yeah that would have that would have just had to roll credits quick if they didn't make up with that kid right I mean, he had a nice car. Straight up sold it. His dad never even talked about that part. God, I don't know how mad he was about that. His dad was pretty awful, though. Uh, Junior is the character we're talking about. He's a flathead. He's got the flattest head in the world. Um, well, it has a slight con, like convex it's, to it. It's strange. <laughs> it's like, kind of like a like a top, one of those ones that you get like the spinner. You know? <laughs> oh he's like God. he's like Dreidel? his head looks like a Beyblade. Um, <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, he's like the rich kid that yeah, his dad the, wants him to be a Carlton. lawyer. Yes, he looks exactly like Carlton. And his dad wants him to be a lawyer for Webster, Webster, and Cohen. And, uh, oh, and Cohen. <laughs> and Cohen. And uh, yeah, he winds up just ditching his dad, selling his car, and uh, taking the taking the boys to Calgary. Canada. Wait, did, that means they had to get passports and, well, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Um, That's a whole process that they didn't go into. That yeah, we don't we don't know Jamaica. Have, that would have yeah, been how how did that... actually from Jamaica to Canada? That might be fine. They got different no rules. Passport? They're not even touching America. This was the eighties. Passports was the 80s. are yeah, and passports are 
I mean, do, you, well, do other countries need travel. passports oh, to go? Yeah. I would think so. I mean, well, think yeah. about just think about like customs and stuff. The guy had his lucky egg. How did that get through? How come? The, I, I mean, think it was. Yeah, I think it was hard boiled. On the plane. No, but I mean, I don't know. That do is they, a good theory. Do they let you bring food internationally like that? I've never flown o- o- overseas, so I don't know. Oh. I mean, back in the 90s, uh, back in the early 90s, late 80s, yeah, it was like getting on a bus. Yeah, well, oh, this, you, know? this, you could just you take trade in 87. You could, just, yeah. you could just be outside, like, No TSA, plane no tickets. nothing. Yeah, scalping oh, yeah. plane Scalp tickets. Plane yeah. tickets. Yeah. Yeah, there were no names on them back then. It was just a, play. It was just a seat number. That's Imagine true. it. Imagine mm. that. Boy, that was where the days. That was, like, over 20 years ago. Crazy. <sighs> so, uh, yeah, so what? So they the, get you know, to Canada. Yeah, they get to Canada. And they yeah, put they on a lot of all their clothes on in fashion. And they st- and they still don't have a bobsled either. So That's right. he's got a he's got a bag an old friend of his, which mind you, John Candy's character cheated years back, and that's why he he's defamed and got his medals taken away. He he hid weights in the front of the sled to make it go faster. And we find that um, out. But he uh, he goes to a few buddies and or one of his friends, who's a great actor. I don't know who that guy is, but I love I love that scene of them in the in the restaurant oh he's yeah. like half an hour <laughs> <laughs> i love when he says that meet me there in half an hour half an hour uh and he gets him a bobsled for like five grand gets him a piece of shit tin can and boy what a paint job that they do expensive. some spray paint and then a fucking and they, wicked and they're polishing good. it like right after they spray paint it <laughs> amazing dry time yeah like it's fully le- like finished and everything looks beautiful so they and they don't have cost like the the whole outfits. Oh, at first. and then later they got the outfits. Where they get the money for yeah. the outfits? They were well, that Adidas. Gift. That so was I a gift from sponsored. John Candy. Oh, okay. Oh, they were sponsored. Well, they said it had the Adidas logo on it, so oh, I would must assume have been some back, back deals with John Candy he must have figured that out. I, that's what I yeah, would have thought. Yeah, maybe somebody owed him. He yeah, was a rookie, right. so maybe something came through. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. good because they were about to go down in Patagonia jackets, so. That yeah, what's out. a body glove? Yeah, uh, which is great because they're way too cold. Like they can't handle, <laughs> they can't handle the cold at all. Especially Sanka, I love it. Uh, yeah, and then they make a fool of themselves. They might have been the paper, all that. Um, they're totally ridiculed. Everybody, everybody hates them there. Yeah, is it the that. Norwegians that are like their enemies in this I movie? I guess the Norwegians because they idolize the Swiss, and the Swiss are pretty neutral, like always. So they don't, they don't talk. But it's the Norwegians who are like, say something, Jamaica. And they like <laughs> totally just bully them at the at the country western bar. You have Norwegians. That and is so weird. <laughs> <laughs> A Norwegian Jamaican conflict at the country western bar. It's, it's, it's like going to Epcot, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, they get into a fight and then uh, some, you know, so, you know, some. Life lessons happen, especially the Gimme Pride. Uh, uh, what does he say? Um, I see oh, pride. I see oh, yeah. power. I see pride. I, I see, see power. I'm a, I'm a bad mofo, and I don't take no shit from nobody. Or something like Close. That. Yeah, you just watched it, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, it's... Uh, it's as best as I can it, remember. Yeah. <laughs> it's... Uh, I see pride, I see power, I see a badass mother who don't take no crap off of nobody. Yeah, that's right. And he makes him makes him yell that into a mirror, and then he gets pumped, and then he goes and starts a fight that he can't win. And then uh, there's a whole bar scene brawl, which is just great. And, uh, I mean, then long story short, they, they wind up at the Olympics. They So they pass the qualifier, which was a big win for them. They passed under the minute, and then they do their first run at the Olympics, and they kind of fuck it up a little bit they don't they don't do that great they're in like last everybody's watching their whole country's watching them and then they go for their last run and that's when unfortunately yeah nobody checked the bobsled i mean there's a lot going on yeah and you should check huh? the bobsled i know but who I mean, that's why bobsled? you're here is that is that an olympic standard like do they check it or does the team check it you know, is there, do they have to hire a guy? You know, Maybe they just didn't have a guy. I think the team like the checks Na- it. Like the NASCAR crew. Well, like I figured it, there would be a NASCAR crew, but yeah, do you need to provide your own NASCAR crew? Maybe they just didn't have one. Well, think about this. Remember, there's like a scene when like they first get to the bobsled area, and mm-hmm. and like all they they kind of like have this panning shot of all the teams, and they're all like kind of like 
you know, like, <laughs> like buffing out the paint yeah. and like doing this and doing that. So I think everybody yeah, else yeah, is yeah. like inspecting and making sure everything's up to code, you know? Uh, and yeah, I, guess. I guess the Jamaicans didn't, uh, they didn't do it because the friggin' screws loose. Yeah, the I mean, they have, the screws. <laughs> they have the shittiest bobsled ever to be in the Olympics and they didn't figure to tighten down the bolts. Right. I mean it was a polished it was a polished turd. It was very nice on the outside, but it was not it Yeah, was it was a turd. it was a lemon. It was a jalopy. Yeah. It was a jalopy. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, it was a jalopy, yeah. Because they were on track to win. Right? They, they would have if they if, if they made they it down tighten that screw. If yeah, if they're if they're whatever the blade didn't come loose yeah. and then uh, they straight up flip over in a tunnel, come out upside down, scraping their head, just which some of the real footage, I guess, was spliced into that of the crowd. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Like when, so the scene when it's coming towards the camera and their heads are like bobbing really slowly, yeah. that's the real shot of them. Like, Man. Oh, yeah, shit. They, yeah, they got pretty torn up. Um, I believe again. I hope I'm not making that up, but that's what I learned over time. So I hope that's still true. And uh, you never know with facts these days and the internet. Um, yeah, people might be like, no, that was just a Wikipedia mess up yeah, right. for for a few years. But uh, yeah, they so <laughs> they get out of the bobsled. They're all fine in theory. They can walk at least. And they straight up lift that thing over their heads, which I imagine it weighs at least a thousand pounds. It must be weird. I don't really probably. know. I mean, probably. I mean, especially if you got to figure in the weights that John Candy put in the front of it as well. He cheated again. Imagine <laughs> yeah. if that's what made them crash. He's like, oh, God, this is was... for me. <laughs> yeah. No, he, he will never coach in the Olympics again. He cheats and then his bobsled explodes. Yeah, that's true. That looked really bad for him. Well, do yeah. you think, like, he's, maybe. He's been worse off than he was before. Do you think maybe the Norwegians, when nobody else was looking, went and sabotaged it? You know what I mean? Went in there with a wrench and, you know what I mean? I could yeah. see that of happening. You know? Take that to me, huh? I could see it happening. <laughs> well, and at the same time, when they're all lifting that bobsled, it's so heavy, they're on ice. And then you saw them slipping and sliding earlier on in the movie over at the hockey rink. If one of them slipped and that thing oh fell on them, it would fucking crush you to death. It would yeah, probably yeah. slice through his like abdomen oh, too. Oh yeah, I would yeah. hope that they have cleats or something that would grip on to the ice. I, yeah, I, I don't know. I like to hope so. Grip with your toes, you know. They got shoes for crews. Guess so. They had to have been wearing those big poofy New Balance, those non-slips, you know. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> uh, I mean, they're not supposed to get out of the thing, but I guess they run on the ice at the beginning. They have yeah, to right, be. right. Yeah. Anyway, bobsledding still seems terrifying, and it did not take off after this movie came out. It did not become a household sport because it's still dangerous, and this movie does not prove it to not be dangerous. You know, yeah, there is very little payoff to bobsledding. Almost none. It's funny. Almost none. When 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 you think of like we kind of say like all the underdog sports movies at this time, I think why a lot of them resonate with us is, you know, like little big league and mm-hmm. rookie of the year or whatever is because those are all sports that kids play when they're kids, you know, peewee football, peewee baseball. Well, and right. most of them are kids playing the sport. Yeah. As and well. This movie right. is about adults playing a sport that kids don't play. And right. so I think, I think maybe that's why it wasn't as big or it didn't resonate with people as well because it wasn't relatable. Right, I most thought people it didn't was even know. Big. I mean, it's a hollering hoot a nanny or whatever. <laughs> well, that's oh, because it, it's a howling <laughs> funny ten. Yeah, it's a howling funny ten. Yeah, kids love howling funny tens. Of course they oh, do. I just noticed the detail. So I've been looking for this soundtrack, like the official soundtrack, and I can't yeah. seem to find it. Like I can't find it on the internet. But apparently, it was released by soundtrack available from Chaos, Chaos Records. Recording. Chaos so, Records. I that's unexpected. But okay, I gotta figure out how to find that. All right, call them up tomorrow. Ring yeah, Ring Chaos I'm Records. Do, do you still have any little? Uh, do you still have any Cool Runnings? Do you still have any around? mini discs or uh, any any hit clips of the Cool Running soundtrack? <laughs> hit clips. Uh, <laughs> oh my also, god! You listen to in thirty this. seconds of a song. Dude, there's a song in this movie called "Rise Above It." Uh-huh. Yeah. And it's the best montage. It's the best song. 
ever. It just yeah. makes you feel like, yeah, I, I got this. Like, I can rise above no it. Worries, no worries at all. It's an awesome. Uh, this is like the most uplifting, like Hakuna Matata movie. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Than, it is because even even if it, even that it doesn't pay off, like even Junior's like- dad is in the crowd clapping. And why yeah. didn't they ever release those Jamaican shirts? The yellow with the Jamaican team on it. So like, I gotta, I gotta make that. Oh, oh, that's fine. Water. Yeah. yeah, I want, I want to re-release that shirt. You the whole live pool runnings merch. Another thing too is like, uh, you don't see it in movies anymore, where a lot of people are like watching a TV that's like up in a corner in a restaurant right. or something, and everybody's like, "Yeah, wow!" Like nobody does that anymore. Like every movie used to have that, like like Tommy Boy yeah. and everything used to have that. Huh. Nobody does that anymore, you know? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, we're all too quick, you know. Like they'll just get a tweet about something that happens. They don't yeah, need to like. That's true. They yeah. don't need to sit there and live stream it. They'll be like, "I'll I'll find out whatever yeah. happens." Yeah, because no no places like show the news. They only play. Well, I guess if it was a sports bar, rap places probably played the Olympics. So I'm wrong. Never mind. Places do play the Olympics when they're on, yeah. Um, yeah. So if you wanted to watch the Olympics, I, I that's the only time I ever watched them when I when I lived in Denver. I spent a lot of time at bars, just watching the Olympics, being like, I don't. It was always on mute yeah. with no no closed <laughs> captions. Nope, just I just watch it and be like, huh, I wonder what they're talking about. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. That's the point of that. <laughs> oh uh, man. Yeah, uh, just but, a just an overall beautiful movie, and I'm glad that you guys weren't too familiar with it coming into it. Well, yeah, I mean, like like I said, I I uh, I haven't seen it since the movie theater. T man, I don't I don't think you have either, right? I probably watched it on TV, but not I haven't watched it since I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. you know, a lot of people don't, and then yeah. I remind them of it, and then I usually make them watch it, and then they <laughs> feel better. Yeah, about life, about life in general, and that's all. <laughs> all you really need you it's know all, it's all you need yeah uh all right um so let's see here you want to go to you want to go to ratings there t-man sure yeah. what would y'all give it so uh so what we usually do is one of us looks it up on I'll imdb, go to IMDb. We, and then we try to figure out what the what the rating is and one of us goes to amazon we see if the tape is available and we see what the ratings are for the regular consumers we figure that's okay. the one place where most people uh you know uh f- would would uh purchase their media i suppose everybody goes to amazon okay. right so, all uh, right. All right. What do you got? And I will check. I will check the tomato meter just to be sure. Of where whoa! We're we've never done that before. Whoa! Cool. That's new. Whoa! 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 Okay. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. <laughs> all right. So, out of ten stars on IMDb, uh, Dane Train, what do you think the community? Uh, rated? It's IMDb. Oh, IMDb perfect. hates everything, so they probably gave it like a two point five out of five. Okay, that's a that's a harsh, harsh estimate. Okay, so Mr. Sprinkles, what do you think out of ten stars? IMDb rated cool running. I'm gonna go with uh, we're probably gonna do like a five point five. Okay, uh, you were closer. The actual rating is six point nine out of ten. Hey, right. from hey that's better than I thought. IMDb. That is pretty 000. good. That's good. That is good. That is good. For IMDb, very good. All right. Um, they don't have a tape copy available on Amazon, but you can get ah, the Blu-ray shit. and DVD. Apparently, it's on Prime shit. Video right now, which is cool. I got to get that Blu-ray. Um, got to get that Blu-ray. There's, there's only one left in stock. You better pick that up. Uh-oh. Oh, hell. Um, so <laughs> what, do you, what do you guys think that uh, 1,010 customers thought of Cool Runnings? Uh, four stars. Four stars. What do you think, T man? Uh, I'm gonna go with the prices right and say 4.1 stars. Close enough. It's four and a half stars. Wow. Oh. Yeah, you got me. That was good. <laughs> uh, all right then. Uh, the tomato meter. Where do you guys think it lands on the meter percentage wise out of a hundred? Uh, Dane Train, go for it. Uh, like an 8.9 tomato, rotten tomatoes. Well, out of out of a hundred, it's. Oh percentage. shit. <laughs> hundred percent. I tried to preface it with that. Uh, but that's all right. 80, but you didn't listen. 89 percent <laughs> tomatoes. All right, all right. <laughs> what's what's the other percent? 
<laughs> what? What's the eleven percent? You said eighty nine percent tomatoes. Out of a hundred. What? <laughs> Preservatives. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, it's it's red dye number nine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I'm gonna sulfate. say. Out of how much percent tomato? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I think rotten tomatoes is probably the most evil of the rating systems. Ooh. It has a bunch of people that hate everything. Yeah. So I'm gonna say it's four point. Wait, no, forty nine percent tomato. Forty <laughs> nine? No, it's seventy seven. Seventy seven percent. Yeah. So split in between you. Yeah. So I think overall we're at a solid ten. There we go. All right, All right. sure, we'll round it up. <laughs> so let's see um, if we ourselves were to rate this out of yeah. ten uh, lucky hard-boiled eggs. Uh, let's see here. Uh, is that good? That you want to do that? that works of course, of course. All right. Lucky so eggs. sprinkles, you're you're our guest. What do you say? Uh, lucky eggs. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and even though of course you think I'm gonna say ten, I won't say ten just because that's you know. Nine point five. Okay. Lucky egg. Uh, so that, there's a few. There's a few plot holes that I. That's uh, one cracked that's egg. Going. It's a half of that's, a cracked egg. That is that is a, a half of a shell right there. <laughs> so no, is, there's, there's a couple. So why why is that? Why is this only? Uh, why'd you why'd you shave off half an egg shell? It's just it's just a couple of those plot holes like the uh, the time gap that isn't explained and then the uh, the the bar. That I really just wanted them to. I don't know if there's any deleted scenes on the Blu-ray. I'm sure it's one of those Blu-rays that's like a tape and it just plays the movie and then ends. Oh, oh, it's just a transfer. It's fucking Probably forty-five dollars for the Blu-ray. It better be better. Better be more well, than a VHS transfer on there. I don't know if there's any special features to this movie, but I should probably get into it because I would like to see some. I don't know yeah, commentary you should, you should or deleted scenes. It doesn't show anything on the back of the box. It does say it's a Disney Blu-ray exclusive. So it might be one of those things where uh, maybe that's why it's 45 bucks. Because I know like, sooner or later, every movie is going to be a Disney Blu-ray exclusive. Well, because, yeah. uh, well, like uh, uh, our, our other co-host, uh, Kevbot, uh, he subscribes to like this Disney club thing where like they get movies in the mail. And they have a lot of exclusive stuff like yeah, uh, like they they released Mr. Boogity and Bride of Boogity on a DVD that you could only get through oh, that service. Weird. A couple that's of years how ago. the that's how the the elusive Cars VHS was released. Oh, that's right. I heard about that. 2007 VHS release of Cars, and oh, that weird. is like one on eBay that some guy keeps trying to sell for seven grand, and just no oh, one's Jesus. buying it. I know it's yeah. stupid. Uh, but yeah, this movie's actually an hour and forty minutes, just about. So I bet they. They chopped it down a little bit. I guarantee Probably. you, there's there's some delay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's if it's still an hour and forty minutes, which is a lot for a for a come of uh, coming up, whatever What's it's called, the triumph movie? movie. Rated. Yeah, underdog movie. Yeah. Is this PG? It is PG. PG. Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, they say asshole Disney and shit. Disney didn't Disney didn't have a PG thirteen movie until I think it was Hocus Pocus. I think that, that was PG thirteen. Is it? Or maybe it was later than that, their first... I remember it was a, it was a thing where it was like, oh, that's their first PG-13 movie. Well, I think it was Pirates. I think it was Pirates. Was it Pirates? Yeah, that, that would make oh, sense, yeah. Pretty sure. Oh, yeah. okay, I could see that. Yeah. Man, because it's got titties. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it has booze. There's a lot of booze. It should have titties. There's a lot of, I mean, like, zombie pirates, you know? but I don't know. Yeah. That I think would be too scary for little kids. I don't know. Too spooky for children under seven. Their first G seven. Yeah, yeah G seven. Oh man, I miss G Y seven. G Y seven. T V Y seven. That's yeah. so Raven. Y seven. Yeah. <laughs> so T man, how many lucky eggs do you give? Cool. Uh, I am going to give Cool Running seven lucky eggs. A C right. average. <laughs> That's oh. right. <laughs> Uh, well, why? Uh, what, what do you got? Uh, I don't know. I think I liked it more as a kid. I thought, like, as a kid, I thought, like, I have a memory of it being, like, hilarious as a kid <laughs> for whatever reason. But now, it, I mean, it wasn't. <laughs> it was funny. Like, some of the jokes are really funny. Uh, but I, I, it, I, it wasn't a Howlin' 10, you know? Right. It was a Howlin' 7. 
Yeah, it was a Halloween seven. Uh, and I don't, it just it was a little bit slow. But I mean, it's like the thing is, it's a really good movie. But as like a VHS Bandits movie, where like there's not too much like the weirdest thing is the uh, the country western club in the middle of Canada. Yeah. And whereas you know usually we'll have heads exploding or shit like that or what you know what I mean. Or, or the nineties so, kids movies are really off the wall. Like off the rails. Yeah, yeah. Off coasters. So this is like as as like a legitimate like movie movie. It's it's more of a like uh it, like more like a Saving Private Ryan is what you mean. Yeah, it yeah, is yeah, the, yeah, yeah. This I is an Oscar winning movie. Just bandits movies. This isn't this isn't uh 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 straight to video. Uh, <laughs> right. You know, back of the shelf at the video store. Kind of movie, yeah, it's you know. Like <laughs> it's like this is a trauma. Have heard of it? It's not a trauma movie. No, <laughs> trauma. Yeah, trauma yeah. should do a cool runnings. Ah, were, that'd be cool. That yep. might have bumped it up a couple. But I mean, it's a legitimate good movie, though. Yeah, I agree. Cool. And I where think, are you at with it? Um, I think I'm kind of, I'm kind of like in between. I think I'm gonna give it like. Eight and a half. I think I give a good eight and a half. All I mean, right. Kind of the same things where, um, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, like the, I love like the whole underdog thing. Um, I love the cast of characters. I think they work really. I think all of them work so good together. Um, I, I'm gonna take one half off because of the shape of that guy's head. It really <laughs> oh, no. bothers me. That that <laughs> alone really bothers me. And you can tell it's not his hair. I, that, it's that weird. Head, it's like, is it is it, is, is, is it a toupee? <laughs> I don't know. But Bad. that, so I take off some for that. I take a, some bit off because the guy was not Peter Vincent from Fright Night. I really wish it was <laughs> him. Um, and and it, yeah, like the whole thing of where I, I I think I liked it better as a kid than I do now. I suppose for some reason now, which is weird because as a I I would think today if I would to watch this if I was a kid today. I almost would think that it's almost a little too much talking, not enough um, goofy. Oh, they're, you know, they're, they're tossing over their their practice bobsled over in the in the hills yeah. of Jamaica. Uh, but um, yeah, so so it's a, it's a little bit slow in that. But I mean, I, I thought John Candy was awesome in this. Yeah, um, I mean, he was he's absolutely fantastic. Um, and I, I just I don't know. I just it, like you say. I mean, like the. When you watch it, like you say, it's a whole like feel good thing. Um, I like the positivity of it, and uh, I, I just I, I you know now that I now that I have it, I could see it again. I feel like this could be a movie that I would watch like maybe once a year um, mm -hmm. as a kind of thing to uh, you know as like a ritual. I could see you know, and, so. and because of the differing climates in the movie, it works at all times of year. That's right. That's it does. true. It's always a good time because you can either relate or be like, man, yeah, I wish it was a little bit colder. It's very hot out today or uh, vice versa. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the nightmare before Christmas of Olympian championship movies. <laughs> wow. Right. Put that on the box. Whoa. That's what yeah, put that yeah. on the box. Disney. Screw this Rocky on Ice stuff. That belongs on the box. <laughs> yeah, Rocky yeah, on Ice Rocky is wrong. Rocky. They should have just called it Rocky on Ice. That I would instead of Cool Runnings, and then they could have just called the bobsled Rocky. He has to uh, scale up the stairs of the state house, or <laughs> but it's but it's like snowing out. Yeah, you know when I was a kid, a Yeti. when I was a kid, what? I would go to the Worcester Centrum Center, and I would go to <laughs> Disney on Ice. I go to Disney they should have they should have done Cool Runnings at the Centrum Center. Oh, nice. <laughs> they they go have an Ice Cats game. Should have had the 1987 then, Olympics at the Worcester Centrum. Yeah, yeah, with the Ice Cats, you know. Kids seats only five bucks. Five bucks. I think Epcot should get a Cool Runnings ride. Bring oh, back some, you know. That would that actually be awesome. pretty rad. Mm, I know, it's not going to happen now. but No. 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 They have an animatronic John Candy. If they, open, if they open up like an ESPN center, you know, they they got that now. So yeah. They, okay, yeah. It's true. Maybe. Yeah. They could open up a whole park just for just for fun and games. Yeah. So I go to Florida a lot, and I gotta say that Disney World is almost invisible when you're driving around, and I can't believe that they own so much. Oh, it's fucking you can't crazy. See it. 
can't see it from almost anywhere driving around. You, you yeah. can pass the thing a bunch of times, and you're like, where? There's no woods. They just put a couple of trees around it. That's all. Actually, yeah, they just like hide the it. Right quick. I I understand. <laughs> uh, I did uh, a couple. So I I went there for my honeymoon with my wife. Yeah. And um, couldn't find the place. Had to go home. Oh uh, well, yeah. Right. <laughs> so yeah. so we, we went to the Pentagon. We <laughs> we, we went to the, uh, we did this tour called the Keys of the Kingdom, and uh -huh. supposedly they own. So you have like the parks, right? They yeah. own enough land that they could build all the parks like four times over, apparently. I believe it. That's yeah. crazy that they own so much. You know what I I'm mean? I'm telling you, they're just going to buy the state one day. They're going to they're well, gonna let everybody kill each other off and then call it, yeah. all the Florida man. Well, They'll let them all take care Florida of each other. Supposedly, and then they can just buy property as they expand. Supposedly, it, it it's almost like it has its own governance because they have their own sales tax and everything. It's mm -hmm. crazy, you know? It's really they weird. They have their, yeah. own their own sales tax? They're yeah. like their own county. Yeah, it's, it's, that's exactly what, what it is, yeah. Yeah, because there's residents in there too. You can live in the properties of Disney World. Yeah, you can have real estate, which I imagine the HOAs there are paying. Oh, crazy! Picture. That's crazy. Yeah. That's my that's my dream is to uh, is to strike it rich on a on a mass millions and uh, go live in Disney. Inside Disney, I'm gonna World. open yep. up a video store in Disney. World. Ah, that's my hey. that's it. Yep, yep. So the VHS bin is video the basement. Bootleg, the bootleg Disney video. <laughs> yeah, right. In. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be selling all those black diamonds for thousands of dollars. <laughs> right. Of course. Just wait till they start They start pulling them back, and they're like, oh, people want these, huh? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, no shit. Oh, Actually, God, I, saw, yeah. uh, uh, I saw that they're they now. they going to the vault. <laughs> yeah, go to the vault. They sell um, at, at, the, at, the Dis at Disney uh, stores, they sell what looks like a, a Lion King clamshell, but it's like a notebook or like a doodle book. That you oh, can, wow. that if you're at if you're on Disney property, you yeah. Know, I only know this because my wife and I are really big Disney people, and we're always like on yeah. Instagram looking at Disney shit, and I, I saw it on there. So yeah, yeah, that's cool. But uh, but yeah. Anywho, um, hey, yeah. So that's it. So that's cool runnings. All right. Well, I was that's cool I was, running. I was really psyched to check this out after all these years, and and I can't thank you enough for uh, joining us and and donating the tape and hey, uh, yeah. and you know uh, and, and doing the show with us today. For this retrospective, so <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you guys had me on. It's been it's been great. Yeah, uh, thank yeah. you. So, hey. uh, so once again, if people want to find you on the old Instagram, where can they find you? All uh, right, collection therapy, collection underscore therapy on Instagram, collectiontherapy.com, behind the counter podcast, yada yada yada. All right, any other That's cool stuff on, in the works for behind the counter? Any other, or or is it like us, where like we literally figure out something like the day before? Yeah, for the most part, we figure out stuff for the day before, um, aside from the rest of this month, where we're doing the Alien movies, yeah. and then uh, we're going to probably wing it until Child's Play. I know we're going to be doing a Child's Play episode. Like we're, I'm making Kevin go see it in theaters. Yeah. He usually well, I heard that, your last but, uh, Child's Play one. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So we, and now, I mean, the whole Mark, ha um, Mark Hamill thing, playing the voice, I That's think it's going to be going to make it better. No, it's not gonna make it, it better. It changes things. It changes I, things. I think it's gonna be just fine as a movie because, I mean, think about like, do you think purists in the '80s were mad that they were making Frankenstein movies because it wasn't the Universal Frank? No, they didn't care because it's whatever. Chucky's like Frankenstein well, now. If they want to thing... make another one, whatever, because we're still gonna get the original guy making them. It it doesn't just make movies, people. Yeah. Just make movies. I don't care because the last thing we want is for them to like hold on to something so tight that no one's allowed to have an idea. Or make a movie. And then, yeah, like Star Trek. You're not allowed to make a fan Star Trek movie when those are the biggest budget movies being made right now are fan Star Trek movies. Yeah. It's like, let people just, whatever. You want to make a Chucky movie? Hope it doesn't suck. I mean, make it. Sure. Yeah, the new critter, thing. the new critter sucked. Ah, uh, the new binge? I haven't, I haven't seen, seen it, it yet. Awful. Awful. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. I was looking forward to it. Uh, but oh, yeah, yeah I mean, they legit just put out the cult of chucky yes. last year and it was an awesome fucking movie i'm dying to see it and it should have been in theaters because it's a great fucking movie and now they're remaking it when they just put out i don't know i say just make sequels that's what i want to see make a make hey, a sequel i'm still waiting for uh, friday the 13th part 11 i just want jason x1 <laughs> yeah, there is jason x1. it takes place in the future after he lands on earth <laughs> 
not bad. Oh man. Hey, that's what the, that's what happened at the end of Alien Resurrection. I'm still waiting for the rest of it. Yeah. I'm, I'm waiting for Alien Resurrection Alien two. Five. Aliens five. Yeah. They they had planned that. I know. I know. It's crazy. Right under. Yeah. Um, but anyway, you know, you know it'll be yeah, super hey, fun. Hey, hey. Um, ah. I would love to do an episode where I get together anybody that I know that are big Aliens fans and do one episode on Aliens. And I would love to do another episode with anybody Dude, I know that's Tom a big the bomb. Tom the Bomb. Yeah, I would love to do an episode on Sega Saturn sometime. Just for the, oh, I don't know. It's not VHS, but I just thought that'd be kind of fun. I don't know. Hey, yeah. Maybe a bonus episode. Bonus episode. That's right. Yeah, a bonus, a little Habsies episode. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that'd be cool. So. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for listening to the VHS Bandits podcast. We watch Cool Runnings. I uh, hope you had a good time. We'll see you next time. This is uh, Dane Train with me, my co-host. Topher Hansen. And a very special guest today. Hey, Sprinkles. <laughs> <laughs> cool. uh, all right <laughs> all right everybody well uh we'll see you again next time and until then be kind and rewind rewind <laughs>